and gentlemen, uh, today I'll present some of the work uh, done on mitochondrial targeted uh, therapeutics and Genzia cooperation in the past few years. Um, let me start out with a brief overview of the importance of uh, mitochondrial uh, dysfunction in aging. Mitochondrial dysfunction is ubiquitous in aging. Uh, we find it uh, in multiple aspects of aging, sarcopenia, cancer, uh, neurodegeneration, uh, diabetes, etc. Uh, a unifying feature of dysfunctional mitochondrial in aging uh, is uh, a loss of the uh, ability to produce ATP. As an example here, uh, we have a graph uh, showing the loss of the production of ATP uh, in <coughs> human muscle biopsies taken uh, at ages ranging from uh, 20 to almost 100 years. Uh, and that uh, loss is, is progressive with likely disastrous consequences uh, for the ability to perform useful tasks uh, and uh, cellular maintenance. Uh, I tend to think that uh, the ATP loss is the defining uh, feature uh, of uh, mitochondrial dysfunction aging rather than any other um, age-related mitochondrial changes. Um, now, what is the mechanism of this loss of energy production? It's a very important question because uh, if the loss is due simply to, due to direct uh, accumulation of mutations, uh, then it might be more difficult to fix it. Uh, it may require uh, basically removal of mutated DNA uh, and uh, provision of, of healthy non-mutated DNA. On the other hand, uh, if the loss is in some way regulated, uh, is due to um, an abnormal <coughs> suppression of mitochondrial DNA due to some regulatory, regulatory processes gone awry, uh, then perhaps a judicious intervention in these processes uh, might help uh, with, uh, with that problem. Um, and um, we may think that uh, in, in some tissues, such as skeletal muscle, there's definitely enough accumulation of mutations uh, to explain uh, the problems uh, simply by uh, loss, loss of function. However, as the next slide uh, shows, uh, there are situations where active mitochondrial suppression uh, <clears throat> plays a uh, predominant role uh, in mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, cancer is a very peculiar form of aging. Uh, the primary insult is clearly accumulation of mutations uh, in the uh, nuclear genome. Uh, however, there is also <clears throat> very clearly uh, a prominent loss of mitochondrial function which manifests as the Warburg effect or aerobic glycolysis. Uh, <clears throat> the vast majority of cancer cells severely <coughs> suppress their mitochondria. They almost uh, produce almost no ATP from mitochondria. At the same time, uh, there is no uh, significant loss in mitochondrial DNA, uh, usually not, not enough mutations to explain the phenotype. Uh, and that implies that uh, the mitochondrial dysfunction in cancer is due to a specific suppression of mitochondria. Uh, that has been the subject of a lot of research, and it turns out that uh, basically uh, cancer cells express mitochondrial um, phosphor ox oxidative dysphorylation suppressors, such as uh, HIF1 alpha and others. Uh, these interact with the ATPase, the, the complex 5, which is the uh, enzyme directly responsible for, responsible for ATP production. In this way, uh, in cancer, we have an example uh, where mitochondrial dysfunction uh, is due to active mitochondrial suppression. Uh, and the question remains, is uh, this kind of active mitochondrial suppression important uh, in other aspects of aging, and how could we deal with it? Uh, let me briefly review the mechanisms of mitochondrial uh, regulation. The activity of mitochondria uh, is regulated on many levels. Uh, there, is, uh, there are nuclear genes that provide top-down control affecting the whole cell uh, over long periods of time. But at smaller uh, spatial and temporal scales, uh, the control 
uh, is provided by, by mechanisms specific to the uh, mitochondrial genome. So if we have a uh, synapse that fires uh, very quickly, it will burn a lot of energy, while other synapses in the same cell may be quiescent. And that requires a fine-grained control uh, of the amount of energy produced in various parts of the cell. And that control is provided uh, by the <coughs> thousands of mitochondrial genomes that are spread throughout the cell. Uh, this layer of control uh, is, uh, is in turn uh, under the influence of a key player, and that is the mitochondrial transcription factor A, or TFAM. Um, TFAM is a nuclear encoded DNA binding protein. It is imported to mitochondria uh, thanks to its uh, mitochondrial localization signal. Uh, and inside mitochondria, it uh, activates uh, transcription of mitochondrial genes. Um, it has been the subject of a lot of research, and its overexpression uh, in vivo, in vitro, uh, reduces ROS production uh, and increases at the same time ATP production. Uh, in vivo, uh, there is, uh, among other effects, uh, with overexpression of TFAM. Uh, improvement uh, in cognitive functioning uh, of aged animals. And these are obviously very beneficial effects. Uh, thus, we have a mitochondrial regulator that is capable of stimulating mitochondrial activity, uh, which is known to produce beneficial effects in animals. And that uh, is a good candidate, it's like the ideal candidate to explore, uh, to investigate, and perhaps treat mitochondrial suppression uh, in aging. Uh, our team at Gensia Corporation uh, developed a modified version of TFAM, or uh, recombinant human uh, TFAM or Irish TFAM. Uh, it consists of the uh, TFAM moiety uh, connected to an MLS, mitochondrial localization signal, as well as a PPD, or protein transduction domain. Uh, PPDs have been used by many researchers to deliver various proteins uh, including uh, diverse proteins through intracellular localizations, uh, including in the brain. Uh, and CFAM is produced uh, using recombinant methods in E. coli, and after purification, it can be injected uh, intraperitoneal, IV, or intramuscular. After injection, uh, TFAM, uh, thanks to its uh, EPD, will pass through cellular membranes. Uh, once inside the cell, thanks to its MLS, it will be taken up in mitochondria. And once inside mitochondria, it will undergo trivialytic processing, removing the carbon moieties and liberating the active TFAM molecule. Uh, TFAM then binds to uh, mitochondrial DNA, activates mitochondrial uh, gene uh, transcription and translation, producing the 13 subunits of the uh, respiratory chain that trigger assembly of the full complex, full complexes which start producing ATP. Uh, we performed many experiments to verify that uh, PFAM indeed uh, works as advertised. So here we have uh, cells uh, in the in the BD biosensor uh, oxygen biosensor plates. On the y-axis, there is a measure of oxygen consumption, which is a proxy for energy production in this case. And as you can see, the brisk, briskly rising uh, dark blue line shows what happens when you add TFAM to these cells. Uh, so there is a very quick response in a few minutes. There is a visible uh, production of um, a visible increase in oxygen consumption uh, compared to untreated cells on the blue line. Now the purple and green lines overlap, uh, and these are cells pretreated with chlorophenicol or ethidium bromide, which are uh, blockers of uh, mitochondrial translation and transcription. And that uh, implies that uh, the effect you see with PFAM uh, is due to, um, due to stimulation of <coughs> transcription. In other words, uh, RH TFAM works as, as advertised as, as a uh, transcription factor. And the red line shows what happens when we add rotenol at this point. Rotenol uh, is a mitochondrial poison, and you can see that the uh, quick disappearance of oxygen consumption 
uh, shows that uh, the effects of TFAM occur in the mitochondria and not somewhere else in the cell. Uh, this slide shows that um, RH TFAM crosses the blood brain barrier uh, after IV injection uh, in mice. Uh, our collaborators at uh, Jim Bennett's lab uh, administer TFAM to aged animals and assay them for accumulation uh, of uh, ROS damage. And you can see that uh, in both doses of TFAM, there is a very significant reduction in ROS damage. Uh, we use actually two different measures of ROS production, uh, T-bars and uh, protein carbonylation. In both cases, there was a significant uh, reduction in ROS damage. And by the way, TFAM is not an antioxidant as, as far as we can tell. Uh, so the results you see here uh, are presumably due to the, uh, indirectly due to the stimulation of mitochondrial respiration that we see with PFA. Uh, now, the Mars water maze is one of the most commonly used uh, assays for cognitive function in mice. And uh, here, uh, the less time it takes for a mouse uh, to find a submerged platform, the better the result. Um, giving TFAM uh, in mice improves memory, uh, both in young mice, these are young mice treated compared to untreated, and also in aged mice, these are treated mice compared to untreated. Amazing, uh, the treated old mice perform almost as well as untreated young mice, so that's a pretty, pretty impressive improvement in their cognitive function. Now, here we have a slide uh, that is perhaps of greatest interest uh, for aging research. The graph on the left side shows what happens after uh, administration of uh, TFAM once a month, uh, starting at 21 months of age, uh, starting very old mice. And these mice uh, live much longer, as you can see here. Um, and the study was done by a contract research organization over a period of 10 months using uh, RHC fan produced in our facility. Uh, for comparison, we have a uh, graph showing the results of rapamycin treatment uh, also in aged mice. And as you can see, RHC fan treatment compares quite favorably uh, with rapamycin as a way of prolonging the lives of mice. Now, we extensively tested RHC fan in a number of different models of uh, disease with no mitochondrial component. Uh, we, uh, in the models that are listed on the slide, we observed various useful effects. Uh, for example, in the xenotransplant models, uh, we observed that uh, there was tumor shrinkage, as well as um, prevention of uh, the tumor-related cachexia. So there was no weight loss in mice, they, they seem to be much healthier. In obesity models, there was uh, loss of weight or prevention of weight gain uh, with improvements in lipid profile, with improvements uh, in insulin resistance. Uh, in models of neurodegeneration, for example, in the transgenic uh, AD, Alzheimer's disease model, uh, there was a uh, reduction in amyloid deposition. And in the sepsis model, uh, there was prolonged survival after injection of endotoxin. Overall, TFAM, uh, RH TFAM appears to have beneficial effects in a number of different uh, age-related diseases uh, with non-mitochondrial uh, components. And that presumably occurs due to its ability to stimulate mitochondrial function. Uh, so what are the implications of our work with RH TFAM? It appears that RHTFAM is able to partially, uh, partially rescue uh, the age-related mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, it increases mitochondrial activity uh, while reducing ROS uh, damage. Uh, and this increased mitochondrial activity uh, is correlating uh, with improved cognitive function in aged animals and uh, improved survival in aged animals. And these results are actually not surprising. Uh, they're quite similar to the results observed with uh, TFAM overexpression uh, in, in mice and that have been presented by other research groups. 
in the slides that follow, I'll try to uh, use these uh, results to uh, answer the question I posed earlier. Uh, that is, why and how does uh, mitochondrial uh, activity decline in aging? Now, it is clear that uh, part of the mitochondrial uh, decline in aging is a simple loss of function. Um, however, uh, such loss is likely to be reversible uh, or more difficult to control. Now, listening to, uh, to Richard's uh, uh, lecture is very interesting. Maybe it will be possible to fix mitochondrial DNA mutations without replacing mitochondrial DNA. That's, that's very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> but on the other hand, uh, the partial reversibility of aging phenotypes uh, achieved by using RHT fan uh, indicates, indicated to us that uh, part of the story is a regulated active suppression of uh, mitochondrial uh, function. It's a controlled dampening of mitochondrial activity that occurs in multiple tissues. Now, why does it happen? And what are the specific regulatory mechanisms when it happens? Let me first look at the uh, possible regulatory mechanism. Over the past 10 years, there's been an explosion of research on innate immunity. Uh, turns out that our cells, uh, when exposed to an infectious challenge, uh, release a number of molecular species that are uh, termed uh, damage-associated molecular patterns. Uh, and these substances uh, tend to have a suppressant effect on mitochondria. Um, DAMs include naked mitochondrial DNA, oxidized cholesterol, uh, and even some usual suspects in aging, uh, such as ROS. We hypothesize that DAMs uh, and related molecules mediate the suppression of mitochondrial activity that is seen in aging. Uh, their effects are further amplified by the production of cytokines by H cells, which form the um, SASP or uh, senescence associated secretory phenotype. Uh, and of course, there are also uh, other intracellular uh, sensors and effectors, which may include, for example, amyloid, well known to uh, suppress mitochondria. Um, so, uh, overall, there seems to be a whole arsenal of uh, various mechanisms poised to suppress mitochondrial activity. Why is the case? Well, the molecular computing machinery of our bodies evolved under conditions where uh, conserving energy was crucial. Frequently, tough choices had to be made between various uses. Uh, and as a result, uh, we have a reciprocal mechanism of suppression between various stressors. Uh, for example, <coughs> uh, with physical exertion, such as running away from a tiger, uh, there is suppression of other uses. Uh, with uh, an infection, a viral attack, uh, other responses will be, will be limited. Uh, and, and even uh, psychological stress may play, play a role uh, reciprocally, reciprocally uh, controlling or suppressing mitochondrial function. Uh, so whenever the immune system uh, is activated uh, by, uh, for example, a viral, viral attack, other organs have to be turned down in order to conserve energy for fighting the threat. This is why your muscles will be sore uh, when you have a flu. Basically, the body's, your body is telling you to stop moving and conserve energy. And in this situation, muscle, uh, mitochondrial, uh, mitochondria will be suppressed. So here's our damp mitochondria theory of aging. You heard it here first. Um, as we age, we accumulate mutations in our mitochondrial and nuclear DNA. These mutations mechanistically produce uh, intracellular and extracellular damage associated with molecular patterns, ranging from misfolded proteins to ROS uh, to SASP. Uh, the stress sensors throughout our body misinterpret uh, these signals uh, as evidence of an infectious attack uh, and uh, respond by suppressing mitochondria uh, throughout our body, especially after we, after we reach our so-called middle age. And the idea is pretty similar to the notion of inflammation. That is, 
to the futile activation of uh, infection-related signaling mechanisms occurring in aging without infection. Uh, there are some important modifications, however. Uh, in this idea, mutations are the primary driver of aging. Uh, infant aging uh, is a maladaptive response uh, to mutations, and active myoclonal suppression is where, so to say, uh, the rubber hits the road. Basically, energy levels go down, uh, trash starts accumulating, and uh, eventually things stop working altogether. A different mechanism operates in cancer cells, but the overall effect is pretty similar. Uh, and since under natural conditions we uh, usually don't reach uh, middle age or much less 80 years old, uh, there was never any evolutionary pressure uh, to develop better, uh, more effective methods of dealing with the uh, signals of damage from mutations and we end up with uh, suppressed mitochondria uh, in aging. Now, if the damned mitochondria theory of aging is correct, uh, then there are important therapeutic opportunities uh, in reversing the maladaptive mitochondrial suppression. Uh, the Densia team decided to find out if this is true, and we looked at a list of mitochondrial contents, <coughs> trying to think our way through to uh, targets that might allow uh, stimulation of mitochondrial activity. Uh, and uh, we discovered so far two different families of molecules uh, that show strong mitochondrial stimulant uh, effects. Uh, in contrast with PFAM to RHDFAM, these are small molecules. Uh, by different mechanisms, they specifically enter mitochondria uh, and target completely different intramitochondrial pathways. Uh, since this work is not yet published, uh, I'm not allowed to say much more. It suffice to say that uh, despite uh, having different mechanisms, um, the targeted pathways uh, are really household names familiar to all biologists. <coughs> and despite different mechanisms, these compounds uh, have very powerful uh, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer and self-protective <coughs> effects. Uh, I hope to be able to uh, tell you about that in the future. And now finally, let me just provide you with a, a brief an update on our work on mitochondrial DNA delivery uh, or protection. Uh, some of you may recall uh, that I presented this work uh, at the Sense2 conference in 2005. Uh, protection uh, is basically using uh, MPDT film or RHD film, this is, this is the same thing, uh, to uh, coat uh, mitochondrial DNA um, with basically many copies of that protein producing large complexes. These complexes uh, pass through membranes thanks to the PEDs on their surface and then fuse with mitochondria uh, delivering their DNA cargo uh, which eventually allows uh, expression, uh, for example, in this case of GFP. Since 2005 we worked on uh, improving the methods for CGMP production of RHD fan or NTDT fan. However, our efforts at commercialization were stymied by a lack of a suitable method for uh, cloning full length mitochondrial DNA in humans. Um, and uh, more recently, there was a report of, of exactly uh, this method. Uh, Brian Bigger and Charles Capel. Uh, reported uh, cloning of full-length mitochondrial DNA in yeast. Uh, and uh, if we're able to replicate that work, then that would really advance the protection project. Uh, then we'd be able to, uh, again, mount a, a larger R&D uh, project uh, to really get it off the ground. And uh, thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions? Thank you.